Okay, so at, why did I, was I inspired to do this? English speakers, I came upon the stat that English speakers as, um, as the percentage of the internet audience have been shrinking over time as the demographics shift, as this global internet grows, and as people, more importantly, keep creating content in other languages, because that's important. So while there are reasons to support a bridge language, which English has typically been, there are a lot of reasons to support greater access to relevant native content like access and the role internet obviously plays in providing learning, opportunity, and even just relevant information. So a couple of years ago, I decided, oh, oh wait, sorry. Actually, sorry, I'm just trying to get, okay. So users by language on the internet, it's about 26.3% English, 20.8% Chinese, and then it drops down to 7.7% .7 for Spanish. And then the top 10 uh, languages are, and then the rest of the top 10, and then 11 to 36 of languages that they measured, this is as of June 2016, is 22%. So there are a lot of languages on the internet and a lot of representation. So, However, a lot of the content is still estimated at being mostly in English. And so a couple of years ago, I decided to, let me just change it. So five of the top, of the top 10 are actually non-Latin languages. These include Japanese, Chinese, Malay, and uh, others. So, these, so they actually, so the, the need for content and growth in non-Latin languages and accessible uh, usernames and services really exists. And so, okay, now let me tell this story. A couple of years ago, I decided to buy my mom some custom tea for her birthday. And I joined the site via Facebook Connect and then when making custom blends, when I wanted to do the gift label, I ended up getting this. Using Social Connect mangles your name if you, don't ha if you have marks on it. Since I have an accent on my last name and these systems apparently were not vetted very well by people with non-English names because this happens. My mom and I had a laugh, of course, but this kind of highlighted a problem and partially inspired this talk. So I emailed customer service, they couldn't do anything about it because of this. So some people, when you use accents on your name, I've heard people call it pretentious, or saying that, uh, that it's something that people shouldn't expect to be respected. And I, I really disagree with that. Because it's a personal choice, it's a cultural marker, and it's something to do. My parents use the, the accent on the last name, and so do I. And so, this cultural and access matter, and making things homogenous is not really the right answer. So, when it comes to usernames, for instance, um, you may notice that if you use Twitter, a lot of times the hashtags that can be on the top worldwide trending can be are often in Arabic, Korean, sometimes other languages, but usernames and uh, are limited to Latin characters. So if your name is in another language, you can't represent it completely. You can in your display name or in anything else, but again, if you use your display name for social connect, it might get chewed up. So usernames are Latin only, and no diacritical marks are included. So you, that excludes a lot of languages that have accents and marks that show how to pronounce things, context, and hashtags and posts, as well as display names, are there. But when you post in another language, you are creating more content, which bumps up the percentage of content that isn't in English. So the, the demand is there. There are people out there growing every day who need this access. There, for example, there's a campaign called Project Enya, which partially was trying to get Twitter to add an Enya with the N and the tilde on it into Spanish, citing the growth of Spanish in the United States and beyond. But it goes beyond this because Enya in Spanish would be just the beginning, considering all of the demand and the fact that five out of 10 languages uh, on the internet are non-Latin characters. <clears throat> so increasing the usernames would increase the available options and variations on popular services. So, you know, there's no, my name is taken. If you expand the options people have available, there will be more options not only for people to get variations on the names they want, but also for people whose languages are not English. So while you can have display names that are different, 
usernames are still quite limited in many ways. So it would also allow for more seamless targeting experience if some people want or need things in their own languages. And that would be helpful for those who are less able to communicate in English. Age, place of residence, socioeconomic status, and these all affect access to both internet and opportunities to learn other languages. And increasing the relevance would be important to communication. Video games have actually been one place, especially MMOs, have where this actually kind of happens. A lot of video games, MMOs specifically, have added the option to include diacritic marks, accents, and other things to get variations on names. Primarily, people just use it to create permutations of names that they want, but the side effect is that more people in other languages have those options. So many European languages also use diacritic marks to in introduce how you pronounce words, but non-Latin languages can use them too, such as Hebrew, which uses it to indicate context as well as drop vowel sounds in the written form. Um, so there's all of these languages that aren't English. The limitations are there. And, but what happens when, you're, when your language is not even Latin-based, even if it doesn't have marks? I discussed this topic with a Bulgarian friend who shared with me what it was like trying to chat online in the late 90s and early 2000s before there was more support for Cyrillic content. And I'm going to quote her because she just provided me with a good story. She said that Bulgarians devised a type of shorthand that would let them communicate with Latin characters and numbers. And I quote her, apart from things looking really weird when they were written that way, the language heavily uses a bunch of sounds which do not have a corresponding Latin letter, and it seems strange to us that you have to write it with more than one letter, so we came up with using numbers whose names started with the same letter. Also, some Latin letters that we had no use for, like Q, we substituted for those special sounds. It kind of looks like this. Those are the English phrases that I don't speak Bulgarian, so I don't know how that sounds, but the English phrase would be, won't you turn on the space heater? Yeah, I'll turn it on right now. And it kind of looks like someone's password. <laughs> <laughs> because a mix of numbers. But it shows how creative people can be when resources are limited and there's not a lot of access. But this is what, because the alternative is basically trying to write out really long strings of Latin characters to kind of estimate um, you know, Bulgarian. But she mentioned also that there, was some, there were some people in Parliament who actually considered dropping Cyrillic in order to move to a more Latin-based system to increase access. But as Bulgarians were the first people to actually invent the Cyrillic alphabet, this was a matter of deep cultural pride and had no chance. And this actually brings up a really important point because having more access and more representations in different languages, more options, can act as a preservation for different languages. There's a, a, a site called Global Voices, which calls itself a citizen media site with many volunteer contributors. They have content in 40 languages. And there's a 2013 article called English is no longer the language of the web, in which they noted that the combined demand for the English version of the site collectively attracted the same amount of traffic as the English site itself. So clearly there's accessible content, there's demand for the accessible content that they provide. And there, it can be a force for preservation. Only 1.5% of the people, according to the article, in Madagascar have internet access. And yet Malagasy, the local indigenous language, is represented on the site. And another quote here. Our Malagasy contributors were worried that their language wouldn't make the leap from the analog to the digital world, French, not Malagasy, is taught in schools, and French enjoys a higher prestige than Madagascar's indigenous language. Our contributors were willing to do the work to publish the edition and help preserve the language. Though they personally were trilingual, they wanted to share their work and the broader coverage of Global Voices with friends and family who weren't as comfortable reading English or French as they were. So having these options can actually save languages. In, in a specific way and transition them into digital form and spread them around. With having, so if, in addition to the Bulgarian situation, they wouldn't scrap their Cyrillic heritage for cultural pride. The Malagasy language is spoken by a small number of people, but it's being actively preserved through contributions and creative content. Another option for this that comes down to are internationalized domain names. And this has been a process that 
is moving at a snail's pace in many ways. Partially, people try to speak out against internationalized domain names, which kind of look like this. This is an example from ICANN that, um, that this is actually just written example.test in Arabic. So this is an actual domain if it existed. So these, these are functional, but it took browsers a lot of time to catch up to this. And also, applications don't necessarily work with these all the time. It was only in 2014 that Google decided to have Gmail support internationalized domains. So many sites don't do this, and then that was 18 years after IDNs were first proposed to serve people. One of the other arguments against IDNs was that people would use them to spoof and, and defraud people. But what the other side of it is, is that it helps people to find sources in their own language, relevant info, and to spot um, bad content and phishing scams even easier. This is an actual one. This is that Chinese website. And that Chinese website is an actual internationalized domain. That's, uh, so websites are located here. The Chinese government and Chinese citizens are able to buy sites on the new domains using this. And a lot of them represent towns and represent information. And, and people are able to search using this domain in order to find the content that's meaningful to them. But internationalized domains have a lot of hoops to go through. ICANN, which actually just became independent on October 1st, um, after years of US oversight, is kind of slow in this. It was in 2009 that they said they were going to open up IDNs to more top-level domains, where they generally were in second, third tier, and beyond. So these are, but in 2012, they said they were going to kind of open fast tracking and more options for this to happen. Although, it, although as of this date, I checked that only 39 countries have approved IDNs. Uh, so what, what else can we do? Can we, we do? And again, change actually, frankly, requires investment, diverse hiring, and consistency. Going back to the example of the Mangled Social Connect, they didn't test that enough to show that it would just mangle people's names if you have accents or if your language is it, not English. It's important that for companies who are willing to become more globally focused, that investment may come faster. But mindful hiring is also very important, and a variety of perspectives are clearly needed. Especially when people are writing off IDNs, for example, as, oh, they're just going to be used for phishing scams and having several tiers of hoops to jump through in order to get them approved. Again, there are other resources such as WordPress plugins and other things to run sites with that allow usernames and content to run smoothly with, uh, in other languages, including non-Latin languages and Latin languages with accents. Active efforts just need to be made in addition to the preservation of Malagasy. A company like Duolingo recently added uh, Guarani, which is a, an indigenous language spoken in Peru, uh, per, sorry, Paraguay. And people started asking for more languages like Cherokee and Navajo. To actively support this is something that people could volunteer to and create content. Global Voices, globalization and corporations are an important part of this because they have the money and, and market in order to spread this. But, we, but Global Voices example also proves that there's demand and people can work together and content creators can do it to kind of keep creating and show that there is demand and a market and people to populate that content. So options are needed beyond just presence and language preservation. The layers of bureaucracy required to establish shifts can take a long time, which is why something like IDNs have been kind of slowly rolling out since they were first proposed in 1996, 20 years later. The layers, uh, we're living in a time when even adding new emojis requires like a three-step process of nominations, voting, and waiting before they're all <laughs> implemented. Like there are, there are ways we can try to work to smooth out the process in order to keep things accessible. And again, content creators, please keep creating. Because when there are readers who have content in their languages, usernames, and access, it shows the demand is there and it encourages people to keep uh, pushing forward in opening this up to more and more people. 
and even hashtags, anything. Just keep creating, keep putting it out there and showing people that this is relevant and important. And that's pretty much it. Thank you.